Okay, and then left, then behind, then slam it down and do that thing. Yeah, he swivels. Just tremendous. <laughs> That's about and it. You paid 25 bucks for that. Yeah, it was money well spent. What do you reckon, Joe? Oh, I still don't believe I'm doing this. If you told them back at Frank's, not been doing line dancing lessons. <laughs> well, I don't know why the footy club just doesn't have a rock and roll night and be done with it. No, right? we did that last year, mate. Well, I voted for a formal. Formal? At least you get some form of body contact while you're waltzing around the floor. I know there's plenty of body contact and rock and roll, just that it happens afterwards in the car. Right? <laughs> I don't care what kind of dancing it is, as long as you can do it to the stones. Oh, now you're talking, brother. Yeah, but did they do the cowboy hustle? Not even cowboy cha oh, Come on, come on, the stones did plenty of country music. Are these your classic line dancing songs? Any without the word cowboy in them? Oh, yeah, there's one called Yeehaw! <laughs> I'll get it. On, yeah. Man Thomas Station, Constable Barry speaking. Oh, Debbie, we are just talking about you, actually. Yeah. Right, when, when did you receive it? All right, we'll be straight around. OK, bye. Ah, uh, the dance studio is something we need to check out. Well, back to the scene of the crime, eh, Joe? Yeah. But I had a private lesson book first thing this morning. I'm sorry, we'll have to give you a makeup. Debbie's not well. Right. What's wrong? Oh, it's all right, Clive. It's just a bit of a funny turn. Nothing to worry about. I'll see you later, OK? All right. I have you feel it. Hey, mate. Uh, Ms. Carlyle? Yeah, Debbie Carlyle. Um, this is my business partner, Carol Gibson. Hello. Acting Sergeant Ben Stewart and Joe Parrish, you know. Hi. <laughs> so, uh, is this the offending parcel? Yeah, that's it. And it was here when you got in this morning? Oh, I found it by the front door when I got here. It had Debbie's name on it, so I put it in her locker. Lousy creep. Look, I'm not putting up with this anymore. Do you know who's doing this to you? His name's Peter Stamford. I met him when I was working at Bronigan's. Do you know the place? Yeah, yes, I do. He started hitting on me. You know, there's flowers on my desk and offering me lifts home. It got pretty embarrassing. Right, so what'd you do? I told him to get lost. I mean, oh, he was married and had a little baby on the way. Oh, and then what? Oh, well, then it just got worse. He started parking outside my place and ringing me up, asking me out. And? Oh, I complained to Mr Bronigan and Stanford said I was exaggerating that I'd led him on. I told them that was nonsense, but they believed him. And then a couple of weeks later, they made up some weak excuse and gave me the sack. Well, they can't do that, can they? Well, no, I threatened to take them to court and the company settled. So I got the money to open the dance studio. Right, so you're saying that now this Stanford character is up to his old tricks? You saw the flowers. And then there's the cards. There's a fair amount of these. Why don't you get those? Well, the first one came on Valentine's Day, and then I've been getting one almost every day ever since. You mind if we hold on to these? Please, I don't want them. But they're not the worst of his games. The phone calls have started again, too. What does he say? Nothing. It's just silence, and then he hangs up. So you can't be absolutely certain that it is him? It's him, all right. Who else would it be? Trouble with Debbie is she's just too nice. Everybody's friend, and... People take advantage, especially guys. Oh, we're not like that, eh? <laughs> not all of us, eh? Oh, yeah, especially not cops, eh? Absolutely not cops, Jack. That's right. I mean, like this guy she's just met. He's only known her five minutes and wants to move in. Yeah? Well, what's his name? Oh, Alex McIntosh. Calls himself Mac. Sells agricultural machinery. Real pushy, possessive type. Right, thanks for your time, Debbie. OK. Yeah, fine. There you go. See, it wasn't too bad, was it? Ta-da. So, what do you think? I think we need to take it very seriously. We should talk to this guy. Yes, I suppose so. He's probably just some lonely, lovesick loser. Hmm. <laughs> Peter, what do you want with Peter? There's just something we'd like to discuss with him. Can we see him, please? He's not here. He's at work. Bronigan's. Uh, yes, we called him at Bronigan's, but they said that he often comes home for lunch. Not that often. Look, what's all this about? What's wrong? I'm afraid we can't say, Mrs Stanford. We really need to talk to him personally. Well, what about? What's going on? Look, we're sorry to trouble you, but we do need to talk to him ourselves. If he does come home, could you get him to come down to the station, please? Yes. Yes, of course. <sighs> what's that woman trying to do to me? Well, she seems to think it's you doing things to her. Well, then she's wrong. But you do admit to harassing Miss Carla in the past? No, I was just trying to be friendly, that's all. She claims that you followed her around, you sent her presents, you made phone yeah, calls. Yeah, all right, all right. Look, I thought I was in love with her. I, 
I met Deb, I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep. I, I guess I made a bit of a fool of myself. And these feelings, were they reciprocated? No. But you continued on until eventually she got the sack. Yeah, all right. I might have gone slightly over the top, but it was only supposed to be a bit of fun. Your bit of fun cost Bronigan's a few thousand in hush money. But they didn't find it funny. You've got the wrong bloke. Maybe we have and maybe we haven't. Let's just hope Debbie doesn't receive any more dead flowers, Mr Stanford. Or silent phone calls. Because if she that, does... That wasn't me. Because if she does, you'll certainly be seeing us again. Are you satisfied with your treatment by the police here today? Mm, delighted. Can I go now? Yes, you're free to leave. Creep. Nice to see you keeping an open mind on this parish. We don't even know that it was him. You heard him. Defensive, shifty. Joe, you can't go around making accusations. The man's got a family. Yeah, I wonder if his wife knows what he's up to at work. Well, I got the impression that things seemed a bit strained. Hardly surprising, is it? Look, by his own admission, he's a fool for love. Why would he send dead flowers? The guy's got a history of harassing her already. Who else is it going to be? Well, what about uh, Debbie's new boyfriend, Alex McIntosh? He's got prized for assault. Has he? Yeah, he's possessive. He's dying to move in with her. He'll be the first jealous boyfriend to try and make himself indispensable. All right, I'll check it out. Dead flowers. Are you serious? Well, somebody is. And they could also be dangerous. Well, it's not me. Why would I want to do something like that? Debbie's my girlfriend. Girlfriend or friend? How long have you known her? Long enough? What's she getting at? Well, maybe your relationship with Debbie isn't quite what you'd like it to be. Oh, look, the first I heard about this was when you just told me, all right? It's that bloody Stanford guy again. You know about him? Yeah, of course I do. He needs his lights punched out. Just leave him alone, please, sir. Hey, what are you hustling me for? He's the one you should be going after. We've already talked to Mr Stanford. Now it's you that we'd like to have a word with. Now, Mr McIntosh, a year ago, you were involved in an incident in the car park of the Coach House Motel in St David's, You're not right? Gonna drag Where that you up, assaulted eh? one Matthew Dixon because you thought that he was talking to your girlfriend of the time, Miss Sally Green. Look, I've had a skinful. I've never done anything like that before. You're a pretty possessive person when it comes to girlfriends, aren't you, Mr McIntosh? Not usually, no. That's not what we've heard. It says who? Is it true? No, it's not. Now, if you don't mind, I've got to see a bloke about a thresher. Uh, just one more thing, Mr McIntosh. Did you send Debbie a valentine this year? Oh, you mean that pile of cards she's been getting? No, 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 not me, mate. I don't send cards. I'm my own valentine. Cards and dead roses are too subtle for that, Neanderthal. My money's still in Stanford. Well, I did some checking up on him, like you asked, and uh, mm -hmm. found out after that thing with Debbie at Bronigan's, he, um, he went into a psych ward. He flipped right out. Did he really? Let's not jump the gun on Stanford, though. I mean, the, the Valentine's cards are a fingerprints. Let's just wait and see what they've got to say, eh? Well, what about the flowers? I mean, hey? Debbie was sent a wreath, right? How long would they take to die? I'd say they're at least a couple of weeks old. Why? All right, well, the flower shop would hardly sell ten wreaths a day. Maybe one of them will remember a sale from around there. They've taken them from a grave. Well, it's worth a trial. No, it's a good point, Joe. Uh, Thomas, please, Constable Lawson. Good coffee? Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, Debbie. OK, yep, we'll get someone right down there. OK, bye. That was Debbie. She's at the Imperial. She's a bit freaked out. She's had another phone call. We're on our way. Chris. She's had a third brandy. Thanks, Chris. Not bad, eh? Believe me, I need it. It was really scary. This horrible, squeaky voice. You didn't recognise the voice? No. It sounded like Mickey Mouse or Chucky. But it had to be Peter Stanford. He should have called us straight away, didn't he? Yeah, I know. No, I just I had to get out. And this seemed like the best place. And I felt. Felt what? I don't know. Guilty. Like it was all my fault. Debbie, that's what he wants. You mustn't let him do that to you. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> this is no good, is it? I, I better be getting back. Ah, uh, so. you have to be back. How about we just give you a Thank you. Joe? Oh. There you go. Now, when you get inside, just check the doors and windows, make sure they're locked, and just be careful when you're out on your own. You seem to know a lot about this. Just be cautious, huh? Stalkers don't always confine themselves to phone calls and funny voices. 
Are you saying he could get violent? Uh, not necessarily, but it's better to be on the safe side. No, you're starting to scare me. Look, I'm just putting the worst case. If you're sensible and take precautions, I'm sure he'll just get fed up and walk away, whoever he is. Mm, well, I know who he is. Everything's in order around the back. VKC to Mount Thomas 250. Mount Thomas 250 receiving VKC. Mount Thomas 250, can you attend outside 72 Hetherington Way, Mount Thomas? There's a report of a male being assaulted in the street. You should be right now. On our way, VKC. Any more problems, you know where we are. Well, what for? What have I done? Calm down, you bully. Get in. Oh, we'll need you to make your own way down to the station. What am I supposed to do? Stand around and do nothing there's while this no creep threatens my girlfriend? That, there's no proof that it's him. Of course it's him. You know it, I know it, we all and know it. And even if there were, you don't have the right to take the law into your own hands. Yeah, well, I wouldn't have to. I won't warn you again, Mr properly. McIntosh. Now, I can understand how you feel. But physically attacking Peter Stanford is not going to solve anything. I didn't lay a hand on it. Shut up. I've had it up to here with you. All right, if you're going to charge me, get on with it. Now, I don't know why, but Peter Stanford doesn't want you charged. I'm warning you, if you do anything like this again, your feet won't even touch the ground. So, I can go? Yeah, you can go. Constable, we'll get to Senior Sergeant Corden to take him through the book, would you? Ben. Yeah. We just had another call from Debbie Carlisle. It's all right, you can open the door now. Miss Carla, what happened? <laughs> there was someone at the door, and then I heard them going around the back, and I yelled out, who's okay, there? OK, you stay put, don't get me stand aside. Joe, go that way. No. Just stay there and keep the door closed. Oh. Stanford, what the hell are you doing here? I just wanted to talk to her. Peter, why? To explain. Explain what? <laughs> that it's not me doing these things. The, the, the phone calls and everything. Don't you think it was a bit stupid going there after what happened earlier? Oh, what, you mean that crazy boyfriend of hers? That's why I went. This whole thing's getting out of hand. Do you have any idea what it's doing to my marriage? Maybe you should have thought about that earlier. <sighs> I had to do something. Peter, you did the wrong thing. <laughs> Now, this matter will be reported and you may be receiving a summons for being unlawfully on premises. This is your last warning, Mr Stanford. Stay away from Debbie Carlyle. You let him walk out of here? We've interviewed him and may be proceeding on summons, but we can't hold him, I'm sorry. So now he's free to come back and have another go? He said that he just wanted to talk to you. Yeah, he would say that, wouldn't he? Is there any chance that he might be telling the truth? He comes to my house and tries to break in, and now suddenly it's all my fault. No. Nobody's saying that it's your fault. It's just important that we don't go leaping to conclusions. Look, I know why he came. I know him. And now you've let him go, it'll all start again. Hopefully this time he got the message. Isn't there something more you can do? Well, there is something more you can do. You could take out an intervention order against him. OK, I'll do that. What do I have to do? Well, you need to go to St David's Courthouse and get one in person. I could drive you there now myself, if you like. Thank you so much, Joe. I can't tell you how much better I feel. That's great. But you do still need to take reasonable precautions, yeah? What, you think he'll be back despite the intervention order? No, I'm sure you'll be fine. But if anything else does happen, it might be a good idea to note it down, the exact time, that sort of thing. Like a diary? Yeah. You mean, in case he does do something really bad to me, then you've got something to go on? No, just so that we might be able to establish a pattern we can link him to, that's all. Oh, hello. Who's this? His name's Bruce. Carol's lent him to me. She thought he might make me feel safer. Looks like he might be useful. And you'll serve that order today? Just as soon as I pick up Acting Sergeant Stewart from the station. You'll be fine. I don't see how you can think it's anyone else. 
He fits the psychological profile like a glove. Joe, we're talking people here, not psychological profiles. They don't always act the way they shrink so they should. About time, we're going to be late for class, you know. I thought you didn't want to go. Oh, are you kidding? It up and we'll get you to join us in the state line dancing championships. Oh, do you think we could? I don't see why not. Hang on, you're the one that said line dancing. Yeah, well, dancing. I can change my mind. Yeah. I've created a monster. <laughs> oh, what's wrong? <laughs> dancing not good for the image. Big, tough policeman. <laughs> Carol? Is she seeing Debbie, Debbie anywhere? Oh, I'm sorry, Clive. She's not coming in. Well, what about Alison? Debbie's still not well, so you'll have to settle for me. <sighs> but I booked her with her, not you. I'm sorry, but there's really nothing... I don't want to do it with you. Debbie's my teacher, not you. You right for squash tonight? Are you? Yeah, he's <laughs> pants. You can't ignore I'm that. I'm not That's ignoring it. Howdy, partners. How was the boot school? Oh, yeah, give us another demo. I will have you know that Carol reckons we've got a great future. Carol, what happened to Debbie? Ah, uh, Debbie still wasn't there. Can't say I blame her. Go on, mm. tell him. I was getting to it. Tell me what. There's someone else we probably should check out, uh, Clive Rawlings. Clive Rawlings, who's that? A uh, student at the dance studio. I think he'd like Debbie to be a lot more than his dance teacher. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. okay. Did you find anything out about the florist? I've uh, spoken to them all and drew a blank. Oh, yeah. good. OK, mm -hmm. Debbie, don't worry. We'll get someone around there right away. OK, bye. Not again. I'm afraid so. This time someone's been stealing knickers off her clothesline. Down, down, down. I'd left them on the line overnight, and when I got up this morning, they'd gone. Three pairs of undies and two bras. You didn't hear anything then? No, and neither did Mac. Mac was here? Yeah, he'd been asking if he could move in, and with all this business going on, I just decided to let him. Did the neighbours see or hear anything? Uh, checked on both sides, not a peep. Did the dog bark last night? Only at the odd passing pedestrian, but no more than normal. Really? Because he just went mental at me. Hello. Mount Thomas 309 to Mount Thomas Station. OK. Yep, got it. Thanks. Uh, public phone box, corner of Hartley and Bennett Street. Phone box, Joe, corner of Hartley and Bennett. Nah, he could be anywhere. Ben? Veronica's, isn't that? Where Peter Stanford works. The call was made from a phone box across the street less than 15 minutes ago. And that means it has to be me, does it? No, but you must admit it's quite a coincidence. Maybe you could clear things up by telling us where you were 15 minutes ago. Do we really have to do this out here? I just want a simple answer. Where were you 15 minutes ago? I was in my office. You're not there now. No, I ducked out to get this from the cafe around the corner. Can anyone confirm that you're in your office? No, I, I was working on a tricky tax matter. I had my door closed. So it's quite possible you could have slipped out and made that phone call without anyone realising. Except I'm telling you, I didn't do it. I mean, it'd be pretty stupid, wouldn't it, after the intervention order? Oh, and thank you very much for serving that in front of my wife. Maybe it's because of the intervention order. It would have made you pretty angry, wouldn't it? The rejection. Look, you do know if you keep this up, I'm going to lose my job, don't you? Look, I don't think we need to trouble you anymore, Mr Stanford. You haven't answered my question. Oh, yes, I have. Several times. It wasn't me. Opportunity, past history of involvement. OK, right, but Debbie worked here. Could have been one of the other employees. Yeah, but Stanford was the one who was harassing her. I've spoken to her ex-workmates and they all said he was pretty full on. OK. It's a strong possibility. But a probability, I don't know. And there's one other thing. His wife's pregnant again. Just like she would have been last time he started harassing her. That could also mean that he's working hard at trying to get the marriage together again. Yeah, or it could mean he's one of those guys who falls in love with someone else every time his wife's expecting. Excuse me, I want to speak to someone about my husband, Peter Stamford. Uh, right, well, I don't really know what's, what's well, going on. You work here, don't you? Uh, yes, but... I but... want to speak to someone now. I need to know what's going on. I want answers. Uh, Mr uh, Stamford, uh, mate, why don't you go ahead? I'll, I'll catch up. Yeah, OK. 
I'm sorry, I shouldn't have broken down like that. No, it's OK. He told me it was over and finished with that Debbie girl, and I believed him. That's why I took him back. Stood by him when he was depressed and had to go for treatment. And now all this, just when everything seemed to be back on track again. Why would he do this to us? Put his marriage and family at risk? It was so hard the last time, I just wanted to walk away. Do you think he's guilty? I don't know. But I'm sure that he loves you. I'm not sure that that's enough. Get out your cash, Benny boy, cos I'm feeling thirsty. Easy, boy, you only won because I was distracted. You're always distracted. Thank, Thank you. you. One of these days, mate. Hey, Joe, did you ever uh, check out that student in your dance class? Clive Rawley. Yeah. Yeah, he's a loner, works for the council. Nothing much else to report. So he doesn't fit your psychological profile? Very funny. And uh, Joe was just saying how Stanford was pretty uh, edgy in the interview you had with him. Yeah, wouldn't you be, knowing what this could do to your family, your career? Hope you're all enjoying yourself. Another good day's police work, eh? Have you got a problem, mate? You don't make me, and yes, I do have a problem. I would just calm down if I were you, Mr Well, Stanford. you're not me, are you? And you haven't just had your family walk out on you, have you? Just like that. So thanks very much. Hope you're all good and satisfied now. Just hang on a minute. Well, what now? Do you want to just... I just wanted to say I'm, I'm really sorry. <laughs> sorry? It's a laugh. Please. I spoke to your wife today. Oh, that'll be right, yeah. You wanted to see if you could cause some more damage, uh, did you? Hang on a minute. She came into the station. And look, for what it's worth, I, uh... I don't think that leaving you was an easy decision for her. I just thought you should know that. Well, it doesn't make much difference now, does it? Ben, we've just had a call. Debbie Carlisle's in the hospital. Now what? Looks like someone tried to run her off the road. This car came right up behind me, all flashing lights, I couldn't see anything. And then the next minute I hit the gravel and then the tree. I guess I'm lucky to be alive. Well, the doc says you'll be all right. We'll have you back line dancing in no time. Yeah, I don't know about that. So there's no way that you can identify the driver? No. Or the car? Peter Stanford's been in my ear complaining about you. You're kidding? On what basis? On the basis that you've been harassing him. Oh, this guy's unbelievable. Does he have a point or not? No, of course not. Stuart? Well, Joe hasn't gone outside the rules, if that's what you're asking. But? Well, it's been a vigorous investigation. Well, so it should be. He could have killed Debbie last night. Hang time. on, hang on. We haven't interviewed him. He hasn't made it official as yet. Do you think you can interview him without uh, letting your bias show? Yeah, of course. All right, make sure it doesn't. Last night between 7.30 and 8, where were you? You know where I was. At the pub, you all saw me there. No, that was later. That was more like 8.30. Where were you before you got to the pub? Look, I, I, I want to know what this is all about. Could be about attempted murder. Someone ran Debbie Carlisle off the road last night, almost killed her. Oh, my God. And you think it was me? You're all right, then. But last night between 7.30 and 8. That's right. OK, I, I know exactly where I was. I, I was outside Sarah's parents' house trying to convince her to come home with Lizzie. Ask her. Uh, uh, ask her dad. He came out and threatened to punch my head in. He and Dad had a terrible row. Dad was going to hit him. What time was this? Time? I can't remember. Well, early or late? Or... Uh, early, I think. That's right, the television was on. The 7 o'clock news was just starting. So are you sure about that? Absolutely. I remember now I'd hoped there was something she could watch so I could go out to her dad and Peter, but there was only the news. Stanford has an almighty row with his father-in-law and drives off in a rage. On the road, he sees Debbie and he goes for her. She crashes and he drives off. You call that straightforward? <laughs> Look at the state he was in when he came to the pub. Look, would he really confront us if he'd just done something like that? The guy's a head case. We know that. Why couldn't it have been a simple accident? Somebody completely different. Somebody drives up behind her wanting to pass, she panics and runs off the road. Oh, yeah. I mean, Debbie's pretty scatty. Well, then why didn't the other vehicle stop? Oh, who knows? Pick a reason. No rego, no licence. It could be totally unrelated. Well, it didn't sound like it, not from the way Debbie explained it. Well, it doesn't necessarily mean Peter Stamford. 
Well, who else? I think we should start by asking Clive Rawlings where he was last night. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming in, Mr Rawlings. This is just an informal chat. It's about Dibby, isn't it? It's terrible what happened to her. Is she going to be all right? We think so, yeah. We just wondered if you could cast any light on things. Me? Um, I, don't, I don't know. Oh, you're pretty fond of Debbie, aren't you? Yeah. I'd never harm her. We're not saying that you would. Is there any reason why we should think otherwise? No. Of course not. Do you own a car, Mr Rawlings? Sorry? A car. Yes. Yes, I do. It's red. It's a laser. Why? Were you by any chance in it last night, say between 7.30 and 8? No. No, I was at home. I was watching telly. My dance class keeps getting cancelled. Yes, uh, we heard about that. So, what were you watching on telly? Um, a sit sitcom, I think. You think? Yeah, yeah, a sitcom. Was anyone uh, at home with you when you were watching this sitcom? No, no, I was on my own. You think it was me, don't you? That, that, like, I'm the stalker. I wouldn't do anything to harm Debbie, I told you that. I love her. It was a sitcom, 7.30 to 8. That doesn't mean he watched it. Look, the guy's obviously obsessed with you, or he admitted that much. But like he said, would he really try and hurt her? Well, you said yourself that he threw quite a tanty when Debbie didn't turn up for his dance lesson. Mm, well, love's a funny thing, isn't it? But to go as far as trying to run her off the road... I... Come on, you believe Stanford did it and he's nowhere near as weird as this guy. Well, that's a matter of opinion. It's going to remain so until you get some more evidence. Yes, I got Jack out doing a door knock of the area looking for witnesses, but in the meantime, I think we should look at Rawlings a bit more carefully. Yes. Uh, listen, these cards that Debbie got, did they come through the mail? Well, yeah, but there was nothing written on them. No, but they could be on the envelopes, eh? Handwriting, that's exactly what we need. Thanks, Carol. No problem. But if you think it's Clive, I'm afraid you're on the wrong track. Why not? He seemed pretty infatuated with her. <laughs> He's only a little puppy dog. He wouldn't hurt anybody. You sure? I mean, he might have just flipped out. Look, if Debbie ever took him even halfway seriously, then he'd flip. <sighs> Debbie needs protection. You, you've got to get this bastard. We will do everything that we can, don't you worry. And in the meantime, she's got you, Bruce, and Mac to keep an eye on her. Mac? Is there a problem with Mac? Not exactly Mr Mature, is he? If there's anything we should know, Carol, I did have a row the other night. He walked off in a huff. It's probably nothing. What happened? He said that if she didn't want his help, she'll get what's coming to her. Hello? It's all right, all right. Have you seen this? Have you seen what they're oh, trying to no, do to me? Mr. Well, read it. Just to. read it. This is being sent to my boss, to all the neighbours. Any idea who wrote this? Does it matter who? It's what it says. Sexual pervert, no woman safe. This is gonna finish me. Peter, don't you worry, we'll follow this up. That's not good enough. Look, you've got to speak to my boss, to all the neighbours. They need to know that it's not the truth, that I'm not a stalker. I'm sorry, but there really isn't much else we can do. Oh, all right, then. Yeah, as long as I know exactly where I stand. What about you two? How did you get on? Yep. This. That, no, that isn't mine. I've never seen that before. No? No. OK, here's how it goes, Clive. We get a search warrant and we go through everything in your house until we come up with a right handwriting sample you, you that know, matches this. You can't do that. Yes, we you can, really my can't. friend. That's On the not... other hand, you could tell us everything that you know. Now, you'll still get charged, but we can tell the magistrate you've been a good fellow and he might be leaning on you. All right, I did, I did send her the cards, but... I just wanted to let her know that someone... You sent her 27 cards, Clive. All the same. What's wrong with that? You didn't think that maybe you might frighten her? I thought she'd like them. I thought maybe she'd guess who it was. You made the phone calls too, didn't you? No. So you're no. saying that you've never made a phone call to Debbie Carlyle no. ever? 
I called her once or twice before, but... No funny voices? How's your Mickey Mouse impersonation? Mickey Mouse? I don't know what you're talking about. I think you do, Clive. Look, I sent her the cards, OK? That's, that's all I did. I didn't do anything else. I don't believe a word of it. His own twisted little way, I think he's in love with it. Speaking. I wouldn't mind letting him sweat it out for a bit longer and see yes, what else he cops I don't have anything really to right hold there. him. Let him go. Away. That was one of Stafford's neighbours. He's doused himself, his car in petrol, and he's sitting in the front seat with a lighter. Let's isolate and contain the immediate vicinity and get the neighbours out of here. Can you move back, please? What are you doing? I'm going to go and talk to him. Hang on, the boss said not to go do anywhere. Do as I near. say. He can't do that. You try telling him. Okay, guys. Peter. Peter, it's Ben Stewart. Get away! All right. I like this. Mount Thomas 208 to 900. What's happening out there? Mr. Stamford is in the vehicle out the front of his house. As he's <coughs> Mind if I get in with him? Piss off! All right, all right, just... <coughs> just from here, then. You want to tell me why you're doing this? What do you care? You reckon I'm a criminal anyway? It's now our investigation is far from over, and if you haven't done anything to Debbie Carlyle, we will clear you. Clear? <laughs> Not clear to... It doesn't bloody matter anymore. Those letters are finished, mate. I was on my last chance at Bronigan's, now they've sacked me. Come on, mate, there are other jobs. Yeah, not for me. No one's word of this gets around. No job, no wife, no family. I've got nothing. You know, what the hell's the point in going on? All the point in the world. Listen, do you mind if I just get in with you? There is, there's always somebody. For me, I've lost everyone I ever cared about. Well, maybe your marriage is kaput, but what about, <coughs> what about Lizzie, your daughter? He's what? He's entered the vehicle. Oh, shut up. All right, Parrish, thanks. Backup's on the way. Meantime, I want constant sit reps. Kids are kids. They need parents, they need, they need somebody to look up to. I mean, how the hell are your kids gonna feel in in years to come when they find out their father killed himself. If it was me, I'd, I'd feel betrayed. I'd feel like he was just a selfish act and he didn't give a damn about me. No, that's not true. I bloody love Lizzie. And this is the way you show it, is it? I don't think so. Look, I'm never going to see her again. Sarah won't let me. You don't know that. Look, Peter, look, I tell you what, I'll, I'll fix it. No matter what it takes, I will get her to talk to you. I'll give you my promise. Peter, give me the lighter. You don't want to do this. What's going on? What's happening out there? You had no right putting yourself in that sort of danger. You could have both been incinerated. It was a calculated risk and it worked, thank God. But now I need to fulfil my part of the bargain. No, Stuart, you know procedure. But it was a promise of seeing his wife to turn him around. You broke the rules. I gave him my word. Well, you shouldn't have. Peter Stanford is a potentially dangerous man. No more risks, calculated or otherwise. Look, it's his last chance. It's either this or the psych ward. Please, let him talk to her. I think we owe him that. Ben, uh, Mrs. Stanford's here to see you. All right, go ahead. Thanks. Stuart. Well done, talking him down. Mrs. Stanford, I'm glad you could come in. I really don't know what I can do. Look, the most important thing to Peter right now is hanging on to some semblance of family life. I was wondering if you could talk to him. And say what? That everything can go back to the way it was before? No, I, I think he just needs some reassurance that something can be worked out with the kids. 
I don't know if it can. What if we could convince you that he didn't have anything to do with his latest attacks on Debbie Carlyle? I, I really... Uh, I don't know. Oh, sorry. We've got something on Debbie's accident. This old lady was walking a dog in the same area the crash happened, saw a, uh, a car leaving like a bat out of hell about the same time. Description? No rego, but it was a blue Commodore. Clive drives a red laser and Peter Stanford drives a white Toyota. What about Mac? What the hell does he drive? You know how many blue Commodores there are on the road? The only one we're interested in is the one seen near Debbie Carlyle's accident. Oh, look, I don't believe it. Do you seriously think I'd try and injure my own girlfriend? How about trying to scare her so that she'd take you back? We haven't even split up. Where were you last night between 7.30 and 8? Oh, that's easy. The commercial hotel. Did you drive there? Oh, I wasn't drunk. That's not what I'm asking. Yeah, I drove there. Put my car in the car park where it stayed till this morning. Anyone borrow your keys? No. How long did you stay at the pub? <sighs> Almost till stumps. Look, Deb and I had a bit of a row. I was drowning my sorrows. Who can confirm all this? Carla, publican. She kicked me out. If Max alibi checks, it checks. No matter how much you want Stanford to be in the clear. No, it's not that. It's just that Mac fits so well. The aggro, the jealousy. I thought you weren't a big believer in psychological profiles. All right. Look, he's not so tough. When he left here, he was going to buy Debbie some flowers to apologise for the other night. Look, maybe Stanford wanted us to think it was Mac. Oh, here we go. Well, if he's got an obsession with Debbie, he'd be pretty jealous of a living boyfriend, wouldn't he? He's got no reason to like Mac after the hiding he gave him the other day. Even though he didn't lay charge. Uh, excuse me. Uh, fingerprints just called back on yeah. that letter. Nothing. I might ring around the car rental company, see if Mr. Stanford's hired a blue Commodore recently. If that's all right with acting sergeant. No good? No one's rented a car to Peter Stanford. None of them even have a blue Commodore for hire. Maybe this was an accident after all. So what? The other driver was just drunk or something and drove off. Yeah, it was an anonymous call. The Ambo said the guy called it in. It could have been a guilty conscience, you know? Right, so our guilt-ridden drunken driver just happens to be driving a blue Commodore the same as Max? <laughs> I don't buy it. Well, nothing else fits. Maybe someone borrowed Max's car. Well, he said they didn't. Maybe he didn't know about it. Jack, do you want to get onto the Ambo? See if you can find out any other information about that anonymous caller. Joe, come with me. Well, where are we going? Debbie's place. I want another word with this Mac fella. I went to the commercial hotel a bit after seven. I didn't get back until uh, after close. Look, we've already been I through don't really this. I care where you were. It's your car that I'm interested well, in. Look, there's no way anyone borrowed my car, all right? You said yourself you went to the commercial hotel to drown your sorrows. Are you sure you didn't take your eyes off your keys? No, I'm very careful. Are they your keys? Yeah. You always leave them lying around like that? Oh, look, I'm hopeless around this place, all right? When I'm out, I'm more security conscious. And you didn't drive the vehicle until this morning when you went back to pick it up from the park? Yeah, no. Did you notice anything different about it? No. Well, I had to adjust the rearview mirror. I mean, I don't know, I thought it was a bit strange because I was the last person to drive. Thank you very much, Mr. McIntosh. That's great. Got one. Uh, locksmith in Penhope Road cut a set of Commodore keys two days ago. Description? Yeah, and it fits. Great. Let's go and pick her up. Yes, all right. I had some car keys cut. What of it? Mind telling us why? So I'd have a spare, of course. Why else? So you drive a Commodore, do you? No. It's just that the locksmith was very specific. The key that you had cut was for a late model Commodore. He's mistaken, I'm sorry. What would I want with a set of Commodore keys? To drive Debbie Carlyle off the road and make her think that it was Alex McIntosh. <gasps> this is ridiculous. We don't think so. We also found out the call to the ambulance service last night came from a female. It was all you, wasn't it? Phone calls, dead flowers, the underwear stolen Ish. from the washing line. I wondered why the dog didn't bark. Debbie's my friend. Why would I want to do all that to her? I think that's exactly why he did it, because she's your friend. I don't know what you're talking about. You wanted to protect her against a man you thought was going to hurt her, just like you got hurt in Perth two years ago. WA police never charged the man who raped you, did they? No. And they didn't try very hard either. So you came to Mount Thomas and you found someone else who'd had an awful experience with a man. Debbie and I were kindred spirits. 
till Mac came on the scene. So you felt you were being pushed aside? Yes, all right, that's the way I felt, wouldn't you? And that's when you decided to teach Debbie a lesson about getting involved with men. I just wanted to save her greater pain later on. All right, see you when you get here. Bye. That was uh, Jack. Carol's been bailed and he's on his way back here. Good. So you're right about Peter Stanford. I gave him a pretty hard time, hey? I feel bad about that. You can tell him yourself if you like. Mr Stanford, I... Wanted to see me? Uh, yes, yes, sir, very much so. Please come through. Oh, I thought you'd caught the person responsible for the attacks. Uh, this is just a piece of unfinished business. Please. Hello, Peter. Sarah. Hi, Lizzie. Hey, Ben. How'd you go? Oh, well, at least they're talking again. Did they manage to work something out? Well, she's going to stay with her parents for a while and they're going to try and sort things out so that he can see his daughter in the new arrival. Well, something, I suppose. Yes, it is. It's quite something. It's a dry argument. Who's for a refill? Uh, no, yeah. please let me. It's the least I could do if I hadn't hassled him like that. He mightn't have got in the car and you wouldn't have had to put your life at risk. You were just doing your job and I was doing mine. It's teamwork. That was more than a job. Yeah. So what'll it be? Um, same again, thanks, Chris. Yeah, you haven't lost your touch, mate. What's that? Stanford down, nice one. Thanks. Just don't make a habit of it, eh? You're a survivor like me. I can stick around for a bit. <laughs> 